This is the weekly business news in English on TV3. I am Nugzaru Khaze. How do you do? Against the background of developments in Iraq, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Georgia made a statement where it called on Georgian citizens to refrain from traveling to that country. As for the citizens of Georgia, they are already on the territory of Iraq. The Foreign Ministry of Georgia advised them to exercise utmost caution. If need be, Georgian citizens can contact the Embassy of Georgia in the Kingdom of Jordan, which is also accredited in Iraq. According to the information of BBC, the Kurdish armed groups have occupied Kirkuk, the oil-rich town in northern Iraq. In the words of the press speaker of the Kurdistan Armed Forces, Kirkuk is in the hands of Peshmerga, the armed Kurdish fighters. He also said that Iraqi militaries had left the town. This thing never ends, it seems. Jose Manuel Barroso, president of Euro Commission, and Stefan Fule, Euro Commissioner for the issues of extension and neighborhood policy, visited Georgia. The high guests were welcomed at Belize International Airport by Alexei Petriashvili, State Minister of the Issues of Integration into European and Euro-Atlantic Structures, David Zalkaliani, First Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, and Nata Sabanadze, Ambassador of Georgia to the European Union. Jose Manuel Barroso paid visit to President Georgi Margulashvili at the presidential residence in Avalabari. At the joint press conference, Georgi Margulashvili awarded the Order of Golden Fleece to the President of Euro Commission. Later, the Euro Commissioner and Prime Minister Irakli Garibashvili opened a high-level conference on investment. The Georgian economy is getting higher opportunities day in, day out. Georgia's aspiration to integrate into the European Union and NATO is irrevocable. Georgian Prime Minister Irakli Garibashvili declared in his interview with BBC TV company. In the words of Garibashvili, Russia does not intend to interfere in the process of signing the agreement on association with the European Union. As for joining the European Union and NATO, Georgia continues to move forward on the road of democratization and progress in order to become a member of the European family. In his interview with BBC, the Prime Minister touched upon the issue of occupied territories of Georgia. In his words, there is a great difference between the Crimea and Abkhazia and Trinvali region. The so-called South Ossetia and Abkhazia aspired for independence and Russia recognized the independence of these two de facto formations. After that, there was no progress in their status because both of these territories are parts of Georgia. Russia has no interest in incorporating these territories within its boundaries, Garibashvili told the interviewer of the BBC TV company. This is simply wonderful, isn't it? Catherine Ashton, High Representative of European Union, reiterated that the European Union does not recognize the elections held in the separatist region of South Ossetia on June the 8th. President of Georgia, Georgi Margvelashvili, thanked the North Atlantic Alliance and the member states of European Union for their policy of non-recognition. I welcome the fact that they confirmed their position and condemned the so-called parliamentary elections in the occupied Schinvali region. Once again, we point out the so-called parliamentary elections organized in the Tsinvali region on June the 8th of 2014 amount to total disrespect and disregard of fundamental principles of international law, reads the president's statement. The leader in the so-called parliamentary elections in the Tsinvali region is the United Ossetia, whose 
program envisages the so-called South Ossetia's integration with North Ossetia and later its incorporation into Russia. What a plan, what a plan. Five million dollars allocated by the United States for the assistance of Georgian citizens infringed by the borderization of Georgia will be spent on rehabilitation of the system of drinking water, watering channels and roads as well as stepping up of public consciousness, education, tolerance and public availability of objective information. The Georgian government set forth a target of implementing economic and infrastructural projects on the territories adjoining the occupation line. The Georgian state has already realized several infrastructural projects along the division line between Georgia proper and Abkhazian and Tsinvali regions. Special Commission, which was set up for that purpose, appealed to donor organizations for help. At this stage, almost 40 infrastructural projects are planned in the villages and joining the division lines of Abkhazia and Tsinvali. The projects foresee helping about 4,000 families. Most important among these projects are complete gasification of population and assistance in developing the agriculture. Vice President of the United States, Joe Biden, made an official statement about allotting additional financial assistance to Georgia. The meeting of Joe Biden and Georgi Margulashvili took place on June the 7th. The United States of America supports Georgia's intention to enhance its security and repel the external pressure. To this end, the United States plans to grant Georgia additional $5 million, which will be spent on the persons who suffered due to the borderization of the territories occupied by Russia. This sum will be used for promoting accessibility of independent information, supporting national unity and strengthening of legislative institutions, Joe Biden's statement says. Apart from this financial assistance, the Office of the State Minister of Reconciliation and Civil Equality has meetings with various donor organizations. Good luck, of course. At the meeting with the journalists, the Minister of Finance presented an account of fulfilling the state budget and talked about the tendencies of economic growth. According to Nodar Khaduri, in the first quarter of 2014, gross domestic product made up about 6 billion 900 million lari. The forecasted income activity from January to May of 2014 amounted to 101%. According to the data presented by the Ministry of Finance, the taxation income amounts to agriculture 31%, construction 28.6%, operations connected with real estate and rent 19%, mining and processing industry 14%, but public and personal services and the gambling business has decreased by 13%. According to Nodar Khaduri, in January and May, 2.8 billion lari was mobilized, which exceeds the activity of the same period of previous year, only 130 million lari. In the words of the minister, judging by the available data, the 5% growth envisaged by the budget is quite feasible. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a really good reason to cheer up. Ministry of Finance and Business Ombudsman will work jointly on the issues of business promotion. At the meeting that was organized at the Ministry of Finance, members of the Advisory Council of the Ministry and representatives of Internal Revenue's Ombudsman's Office discussed topical issues of business. 
they trashed out the need for improving on certain details of legislation connected with business matters. We examined a number of problems that worry the business sphere. There are matters which are easily coordinated, while other issues require special approach on our part. We endeavor to bring our positions together in order to make business environment in Georgia more attractive. Our businessmen shouldn't dither on decoding the taxation laws in a correct way. They should think about creating additional jobs and country's economic development. According to business ombudsman Georgi Gvacharia, these routine meetings have brought effective results. The planning of meetings will go on and it will enhance efficiency and bring better and better results. No doubt about it. In the Kakheti region, ministries of agriculture economy and infrastructure jointly organized a two-day long tour for journalists. During the media tour, the journalists had the opportunity to survey 10 enterprises along with distillery, cattle and poultry farms. Managers of the enterprises acted as guides and told the media representatives how they developed their ventures thanks to beneficial agro credits. We toured several wineries which were financed within the framework of cheap credit program. Only in our region they built eight big new wine cellars. At the same time, entrepreneurs restored and refurbished the same number of enterprises. We took the advantage of beneficial agricultural credits and we received about one million lari within the framework of this project. Within the framework of this project, which finances 12% of that credit, thanks to this credit, we increased efficiency of our Khvareli distillery. Similar tours are scheduled in all regions of Georgia. The more, the better. Kaha Kaladze, Minister of Energy and concurrently Prime Minister of Georgia, launched building of Kintrishi Hydroelectric Powerhouse in the Kintrishi River in the village of Chahati in the Kobuleti district of Achara. Hydro Development Company Limited is implementing the project. According to the Ministry of Energy, the design capacity of the Kintrishi Hesse is 6 megawatts and its annual output will amount to 38 million kilowatt hours. Construction of this hydro station will be over by the fall of 2016. The estimated investment value of the project is about 10 million euros. In the words of Kahakaladze, the Estonian company which made this investment is interested in other similar projects as well. It implies several hundred millions of additional investment. Welcome, welcome. Minister of Energy Kahikaladze also opened the newly constructed gas supply pipeline in the village of Ahal Sopeli in the Zubdidi district. <laughs> Apart from the Minister of Energy, the ceremony of launching the gas supply line was attended by the representatives of Azerbaijan companies for transporting of gas and oil and the Sokar, of course. The minister and representatives of the Azeri companies lighted up a symbolic torch in the center of the village. More than 1,700 customers were prepared for receiving the gas. The gasification of that segment of the Zugridi district cost about 2 million lari. According to the existing plan, by the end of 2014, over 86,000 families will be gasified across the nation. Many more, many more. TBC Bank has entered the Stock Exchange of London. Georgian Prime Minister Irakli Garibashvili attended the official presentation of TBC Bank at the London Stock Exchange. The Prime Minister addressed the guests and participants in presentation and wished success to the Georgian Bank. According to him, the TBC Bank made an important step on the international market 
in the direction of promoting Georgia. He assessed the fact as a trust in our country's financial institutions. While in London, Iraq Ligaribashvili and Georgi Kvirigashvili, Minister of Economy of Georgia, met with the president of the London Stock Exchange. Looks like things are moving forward, but what about the certain amount of talks in the press about this powerful and successful Georgian bank? Entree, a well-known catering enterprise, which is popular with Belizeans, opened its seventh outlet at number 47 Les Salise Street, downtown Belize. The Entree new outlet differs from its other maze by its assortment. Unlike its other outlets, Entree offers Italian confectionery to its customers. We launched the seventh Entree outlet where we serve an assortment of different kind. According to the founders of Entree, the company intends to extend its geography. It plans to open three Entree outlets in Baku, capital of Azerbaijan. Well, bon appetit, dear friends. The Georgian Association of Quality awarded five companies with the mark of quality. Among the winners of the award were Screening Center, Restaurant Funicular, Geo Cable, Elita Burji, and F. Lavers. The winner companies are entitled to display the quality mark and emblem for the period of three years. Restaurant Funicular hosted the ceremony of awarding quality marks. We truly need quality in everything in this country. Ministry of Environmental Protection launched a You Know Supported Project, which envisages the development of natural reserves in Achara. The relevant agreement to that end was signed by the Minister of Environmental Protection and the representative of the United Nations in Georgia. The project foresees development of infrastructure improving its management. The agreement envisages implementation of various social economic projects, which will be of great help for the local population and ensure their involvement in the development of natural reserves. We signed today an agreement with the Ministry of Environment, and it's one of many agreements we've signed um, under the um, present ministry. This one is to support natural reserves and natural parks in Ajara, and it will strengthen the financial administration of the, uh, of the park system, but it will also enable people who live in those parks to have a better livelihood, um, to get employment, to open services for the tourists that will come in. The joint project is estimated to continue for four years it is aimed at the extension of the network of natural reserves in Achara. High time for it indeed. The National Agency of Tourism presented traveler Fred Finney, the Guinness record holder, with the title of an honorary representative of Georgia. Fred Finney has been actively traveling for 52 years, and by now he has covered over 24 million kilometers. He is one of the passengers of the Concorde who has flown on board of that famous jet plane for 718 times. Mr. Finney is ready to support our country absolutely free of charge. He will be our honorary representative on a global scale. He intends to work on such problems as focusing the attention of low-budget air companies on our country, entry of new hotel brands to the Georgian market, etc. I guess I left the best till last. It's the last country I've been to. But it also was number 150. So very important. But most importantly is the tourism, and I brought my colleague with me. Head of the Tourism Administration of Georgia presented the renowned traveler with a special certificate that verifies his new status. 
Also, a very famous Georgian bicycle traveler, Jumber Lejava, could be a nice match for him too, I would say. Tomorrow, the elections of local self-government will take place in Georgia. These are the second elections during the rule of the new authorities of the country. Georgia's international image greatly depends on holding these elections fairly and democratically. Georgian electorate will have the opportunity to poll for their representatives in municipalities and mayors of self-governing cities and towns of the country. People will directly vote for their candidates for the posts of mayors and members of local uh, sacrebulos, the city councils. There will be 460 polling stations open throughout the country. While the total number of voters is almost three and a half million people. Did I say our good international image? Yes, we truly need that. Representatives of the Congress of European Council and OSCE member countries will monitor the elections of local self-government in Georgia. This information was voiced at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Georgia. However, in the words of David Zankaliani, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, OSCE will not commission its observers in full force. Zankaliani said that in response to fourfold invitation of the ministry, OSCE cannot monitor the elections in full force. Well, shall we take it as a sign of trust in the enhanced democratic process in Georgia? Why not? Okay, that's all today. You are watching the weekly business news in English on channel three of the Georgian television. Thank you very much for being with us. I am Nugzar Ruhadze. I'll be back on the air tomorrow evening at exactly 11 p.m. with a special edition about the current elections of local authorities of the country.